Today's video is going to be 12 World War II books I think would be amazing, excellent choices for your middle graders. So if you have a middle grader or even a younger child who you want to read aloud to, these books are going to be a great option for studying World War II. I'm going to be going through them in sections of location. So we're going to start in Europe and we're going to end in the Pacific Islands. The thing I love about this is that they're all historical fiction except for one that is a, a telling about a true event and they are pretty, that one's pretty fact-based, but I'll tell you which one that is when we get to it. So let's get right into this list. So this starts in Germany and takes you all the way to California. It starts at the beginning of World War II and actually there's not really, um, I would say, there's what's happening in Germany isn't necessarily affecting the rest of the world yet. And it just, um, the story is so moving. It was beautifully told. It's got a lot of like musical themes throughout the whole story. And just each individual story it's got, it's got three different parts where there's three different people who are the lead for that part of the book. And just the way that the author pulled them all together, it's an incredible read definitely a good take on what was happening around the world in World War, at the very start of World War II. The next one is called 20 and 10 by Claire Bishop. This is set in France during the occupation. It's about a private middle school in France and some Jewish children are brought there to be hidden and live alongside the French children in the private school. But when the Germans come, it's like, what are they gonna do? So Germans are obviously gonna come and check and see what's going on at that school. And it's just about the bravery of the children living there and what they did to uh, protect the Jewish children that they were hiding uh, from the Germans at their school. The next one is Number of the Stars, about the Dutch resistance. And I love the story of how the Dutch were able to save a significant portion of their Jewish friends and neighbors. The fourth one is called The Winged Watchman by Hilda Van Stockum. This story has a lot of different elements. It's set in Holland during the German occupation. Again, I just love that each of these stories is taking you to a different place. You're getting to see what it was like for them, for that country, because almost the entire world was affected as we know. And I think it's just fascinating the different um, the different ways the di different countries and the different people living in that country were affected by this set of events that was taking place so the winged watchman was a great story about a little boy in Holland when the story starts the little boy it, like he can't even remember what it was like to be able to eat till he was full and eat whatever they wanted and this thing called chocolate like what was that they weren't even experiencing that and they've been really under this um, oppression of the Germans for quite a long time so he didn't even have a memory of what that was like so I don't want to spoil the end for you I was say I'm this was a tearjerker at the end um, but it was a really good read and it had a happy ending I guess it just kind of had some bits that were sadder for me the next one is called Snow Treasure it's set in Norway in 1940 and what it is about is that the Norwegians had gold a lot of gold that they were trying to protect from getting into German hands and they used the sleds of the school children to sneak that gold out of Norway and take it for safekeeping in the US. So really, really good story. I'm again, I listened to the audiobook. You can get 60 days free on Scribd. If you use my link, I'll put it in the description. So this is available right now on Scribd and I just have to say it was a great read. It only took about, I think it's about four and a half hours long to listen to it. And it was just a really, really great book about again, the start of World War II in Norway, what they were doing to prepare and how even the school children were helping. So we're gonna go away from that part of Europe. So we talked about Norway, Holland, France, and Germany. Now we're gonna move into British, so the non-controlled. These were at least partially controlled um, countries and now we're gonna be in Great Britain where there was not German controlled, but certainly German affected during World War II. Book six is The War That Saved My Life and then the sequel to that, The War I Finally Won. This book is one of the best books I've ever read. They were taken from London and sent into the country for safety, right? I think we all know that that's what happened, but this was a story of a little girl who actually used that as her way to escape her abusive mother. And the story, again, I mean, oh my gosh, it gets you in the feels. I probably cried many times, but I also laughed. Like I laughed and I cried and it was such a good story. And she goes into the country, she gets to experience all these things and she's with somebody who um, takes care of her and feeds her and treats her well and it's just it's um, 
again, a different outlook on the same scenario we've heard about and we've heard other stories. I've certainly read other stories about children and the evacuations and this just was very touching, very moving. And then this is the sequel. And in this one, it definitely gets a little bit more into like the changes that happened during World War II. So the place where they're living, they have to tear up all of the yards and tear, like turn it into a potato farm, like a gigantic potato farm. And they have land girls who are working the land. And so just some other like aspects of the war that um, kind of get incorporated into this. Just really incredible reads, really um, diving into World War II in England from the perspective of a middle grader. A Place to Hang the Moon is another book about the evacuees and what they did, how they used that um, hard situation of being evacuated from their home, from their city, into something really for good. Recently orphaned, they have nowhere to go, and so the children use the evacuation to go into the country and look for their forever home, and it's just a really sweet story again. One where I laughed, one where I cried, and definitely one that will stick with you. Like, I can't tell you how much this book just stuck with me and just, like, it's the kind of book you just wanna curl up and read by the fire, um, especially the ending because that's the best part. So I like happy endings and this had a happy ending, but again, lots of talk about what was going on, um, listening to the princess's speech during the beginning of World War II. Just some really good, interesting facts about England during that time. I'm gonna take an intermission from the books, from telling you about the World War II books and say, why are all these books um, just literature-based learning versus like textbooks about World War II? Real books make learning come alive and they create an emotional connection. So I was definitely emotionally connected to these stories that I read and they have stuck with me. So real books stick with you too, way longer than reading facts or dates in a textbook. And it also creates a lot of context. So you have a much bigger picture of uh, exactly what you're learning and kind of what it was feeling like for those people. I think that for children, like it really helps create a much broader picture of what that looks like. And I just love that uh, for myself and for my kids. If you wanna learn more about literature-based learning, I would definitely recommend checking out my sunlight video because I talk about the things I love about sunlight and one of those things is that it's all literature-based learning. Several of these books came in my homeschool curriculum, although not all. Um, I did pick up quite a few on my own just because I love to read and I love to read to my kids. So um, some of these I bought for them, some I bought for myself, and they have all been wonderful. If you want to learn more about sunlight, check out my video, I'll put it up here. Okay, now we're going across the Atlantic from Great Britain to the US. So now we're gonna be on the coast of the US, the Atlantic Ocean. The next book is called Louisa May and the Nazis in the Waves. This is set on the East Coast during World War II. There are rumors flying around about Nazis offshore, but no one's really saying anything for sure. A lot of deep topics. We cover depression, um, the loss of a family member. Um, before the war had even officially started for the Americans, it was just very new. So I thought this was also a really interesting take on the start of World War II for the American side. Book 10 is Under the Blood Red Sun. So this one is set in Hawaii. This is a different type of book, I would say, um, in terms of like the storyline. I didn't love the writing style of this one quite as much. I think Graham Salisbury was, is a great writer. I just didn't like, I didn't love it as much as some of the other stories, but I did love that it's set in Hawaii, which is where I lived for a number of years. And so it's kind of like, um, it was kind of sentimental, but I did also really like just the storyline, right? Cause it's talking about what was happening to the Japanese. If you've ever been to Hawaii, you know, there are a lot of J Japanese people living in Hawaii. So this story is set right before Pearl Harbor going to after it, right? So then um, this little boy is Japanese, his parents immigrated over. So he was born in Hawaii. Talks about the different cultures and talking about what happened to the Japanese at the start of World War II in Hawaii. So this book is actually the only one that is like a true story, right? It's actually a true story and it was amazing. It's about a plane that gets stranded in the ocean in World War II, 1942 is when it's set, and the boys are flying from Hawaii, they're on kind of a secret mission, and they get lost in the ocean. And if you can just imagine a plane, when they're out there, 
you need correct navigational gear and you need to know where you're going because that ocean is big. So they get lost and it's the story of their survival and it is a page turner. We were like, we, we the kids did not want me to stop reading. I think I literally read the whole thing in a day, maybe a day and a half because we just like had to find out what happened to all the guys on the boats. It's a wonderful book. I definitely recommend it and I love this a true story. The last one is Code Talkers. This is about the Navajo Indians who were using their native language to send coded messages from Japan to and other places in the Pacific to the United States. So they saved so many lives. They had an incredible, incredible story, incredible um, task. And just some of the statistics in this book, some of the facts and just interesting um, observations and things I had never learned about. I never learned about what the Navajos did for the United States during the war. It was just incredibly fascinating and really moving. That sums up my list of World War II books for middle graders. I hope you found this list useful. I'm Tiffany, the Happy Homeschooler. I make videos every single week about homeschooling books, and I would love to have you guys join me. Don't forget to check out that link for 60 days free on script, and I hope I'll see you guys again really soon.